we were living in Arizona full time because I was playing for the Cardinals. Just tried to do everything we could to keep my wife, you know, entertained in bed, you know, playing games, playing video games, playing, watching movies. I think she got addicted to watching uh, Frasier. Hey, baby, I hear the blues are calling, toss salads and scrambled eggs. Sports, sports, sports. Everyone loves that. You want to do it at home? One, two, three. Sports, sports, sports. You're not doing it because you don't want to? That's fine. Today on the show, we are talking with journeyman offensive lineman Ted Larson. He's been in the league for 10 years. Talks about his experience uh, with his firstborn in the NICU, and he talks about why no one should ever live in Phoenix. It's just too hot. He didn't actually say that. I'm telling you, it's too hot. Don't live there. Go, Ted. Go, you. Sports, sports, sports. Here's Ted Larson. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so you're out, you're out in Phoenix. Why would you live in Phoenix? What are you thinking? July is brutal. July is usually the the month we question a lot why we live here. That's that's kind of nuts. How how is free agency treating you right now? It's got a little Corona factor to it, and it's got a little uh, you know year eleven factor. So it's been relaxed. There was no second phase of free agency like you usually encounter. Just hanging out, waiting for uh, training camp to get started. How is it going to affect how you guys come back to to camp? I think it's going to affect a lot of things. You know, you see a lot of sports coming back, but they're not up close and uh, personal like football. You know, every play you're you're swapping spit, and you know there's blood and all kinds of uh, stuff like that. So they can have all the precautions they're going to have, I think, outside of the the practice facility and and meetings and stuff like that. But, I mean, when you're on the field, it's, uh, you know, you're up close and personal. So it'll be really interesting to see how uh, the return to play happens. When you came into the league, were you single, married, dating? What was the situation? I was dating my, who's now become my wife. Okay. We didn't get, uh, we engaged about four years in. You have uh, two kids, a three-year-old and a four-year-old, right? Boy and a girl? Girl first and then boy second. Your daughter, you guys had some challenges uh, before and, and after her birth, is that right? When my wife was pregnant, we kind of thought it would just be a normal pregnancy. And we went in for like a, a routine checkup and, and they told her she had some, some issues and she had a high-risk pregnancy. And she was going to have to go on bed rest for about 16 or 17 weeks. And so for me, that was that was like a, a life changing thing because you think to have a chance that that we would lose the baby was a very scary time, and and it made us appreciate the doctors and and then the birth itself. So I mean, it's definitely put things in in perspective for us, and anybody can have you know struggles with with pregnancy and getting pregnant and and having a baby. Sixteen, seventeen weeks that is an eternity. We went out to eat and my, my wife's water broke kind of just randomly. <laughs> we were like a month early. I was thinking I was going to have the whole weekend off and her water broke. And, you know, I rushed to the hospital thinking like, oh, here comes the baby. And the doctor's like, oh, it's going to be about 12 more hours. Yeah, it's never like it is in movies, right? Like they're like, you got to get there. Yeah, so we get there at like, you know, nine at night. And I'm thinking oh, we're going to be, I'm going to be home in like an hour. And he's like, no, we're spending the night here. And she went in labor and, and we had a successful birth. It was a great feeling for us. Was, is that technically a preemie? Yeah, she was a preemie. I think it was, she was like, I'm not sure the weeks, but it was about, it was about a, a month early. And how much time did she actually have to spend in, in the NICU or was it? It was brief. I mean, it was a couple days, uh, you know, and she was healthy enough where she did like the, I think they call it like a car seat test where they, they see if they can withstand the car ride home. So I think it took her a couple of days to pass that. And then that kind of led to a little bit of work me and my wife have done with uh, the, the NICU in whatever whatever city we've been playing, you know, whether it was Chicago or Miami and and Phoenix too, with with Phoenix Children's Hospital. But I've picked the, in the NICU of the city I'm playing in, and they designed the cleat and then kind of auctioned the cleat off. Have you been able to interact at all with, with parents when you, when you go visit? Or yeah, I mean, I, I for me, I like to get like you said, presence. But you know, they're dealing with such you know tough struggles with you know a one pound baby or something. If I can kind of take their mind off it for a couple of minutes, and we can just have a chat. And tell them, you know, our successful story and successful story of others that we know, uh, and kind of just help them stay focused and and stay on that path towards getting out of the hospital. You played defense most of high school and and first two years of college, and then you kind of just switched over to uh, to O line. Um, what where'd that come from? And I think there's a lot of kids, you know, that message me on whether it's social media or something that. That want to know about the transition because it, it happens a lot and and even even transitioning from you know I played center in college to playing guard in the NFL I think being versatile and and being able to play multiple positions helps you play a longer time whether you know whatever sport you're in. What O line skill would you say uh, carries over to parenting? I feel like multitasking. You know, like it's it's chaotic. You're trying to make a a mic point 
you know, on the field while, you know, the, the stadium's loud and people are yelling. So I try to be that kind of like clear headed individual with it when it comes to two kids crying or whatever in the back seat and I'm driving. What advice would you have for people that want to be parents? I went from very quickly from being a young dude, kind of just trying to figure out what's going on to being like the old dad. Like football years are like dog years. So it's like, um, you know, I'm, I'm one of the elder states. And, but I mean, for me, it was being ready. You know, it's like I, I really wanted to, I was really content with my life and I wanted to have kids. I knew I was ready to have them and, and don't rush it. I mean, I know a lot of people are quick to have kids or, or rush because they're in a hurry, but, you know, and enjoy that single life and enjoy that, the, you know, just being married with your wife. And whenever you think you're ready to, to have it, know that, uh, you know, it's going to, it's going to be probably harder than you thought, but it's going to be way more rewarding than you thought. You know, it's, it's been a game changer for me, life changing. Absolutely. Ted, thanks for taking the time to, to chat with us. Uh, obviously we, we uh, wish you the best with free agency. Well, stay cool out in, out in Phoenix. And thanks for connecting with us. Yeah, thanks so much.